Hey guys, this is a tutorial showing you how to insert data asynchronously into a MySQL database using Ajax and PHP. So I'm going to use this form to show you um, how um, data can be inserted to a MySQL um, table of a database using Ajax and PHP and it's asynchronous. So right here I'll put in um, maybe Bob City um, Venice Italy I don't know Venice let's see I don't know either. I'm gonna click away from the box and then you see right there it updated and this is the actual MySQL table um, so you can see that um, it up it updated. So let me type in another one, like maybe um, Joseph of Queensland, Australia. And then I click away, and then oh crap, I spelled it wrong. But well, whatever, you get the point. Um, so you can see it. It updates right away. How I use this is the JavaScript on blur function. So once a user just clicks away from the text box, as I did, it just automatically updates. So let's see how to do this. I create for this field. I just you know you could do anything, but I created um, four columns: ID column, as you should pretty much always have, a name, city, and country column. These are all varchar fifty. Or you could do it any way you want. So let's go into the heart of the code now. So I created a JavaScript function called insert user data. So this function will, when the on blur function is called, when a user clicks away from the box, this is the function that's called. And um, the first thing we do in this function is we create a variable called request. And in Ajax, you have to create a request object. So I use a series of try catch statements, and I, I, I use a series of them because different browsers, um, one request statement might not work for one browser. So I have a series of if not, then try this, and then if not, try this because. Um, different browsers are obviously different so they might not be able to create a request object so I, I use several statements like these are more specific to Microsoft so that's why you see the name try Microsoft so um, yeah it's three statements so and if no ob request object is able to be created then it becomes null in that case we won't be able to um, communicate with the server because we can't get uh, we can't request it because we don't have an object but if you're using a, a a major browser it should be able to create a request object and that way the browser can communicate with the server that's how that's the heart of Ajax the browser has to make a request to the server in order to communicate with it so that's why it's, it's absolutely necessary to have a request object so that's what this block of code does right here and then after this I create a variable called URL and I set it equal to insert.php so this is a separate PHP file that um, that we use to process um, this code so I name it mine insert.php <clears throat> and you'll see later what the PHP code has in it but just realize you'll need a separate document called a uh, PHP file and I name mine insert.php and then here we have person name a variable name person name document dot get element by ID name underscore entered dot value so basically we create the how we created the three HTML um, text boxes we created those three in HTML and now we, we create JavaScript variables in order to get all the elements and we, we these are all the variables I created the names of them 
uh, their person, person name, person city, and person country. And then I just use the JavaScript document um, dot get element by ID function to get all the values from the text boxes. And later on, let me show you the HTML code. It's just simple text box code. And then on the last code, on the last text box, I use the JavaScript on blur function. And I set it equal to insert username. Um, the insert username function which calls this and then this is what I'm going through right now so um so I get all the values from the text boxes and then this is a very important very important variable there vars or various whatever you want to call it but this is a variable that ultimately the PHP uses to extract the data from so once you know how to do this, if you know PHP, it's almost a wrap because all you need to know, do is know how to get the data that the user entered from the text box into a PHP file. And then from there, all we have to do is insert it into a MySQL database. So I create a variable called vars, there's, and since there's three text boxes, there's three name pair values, name, um, name value pairs. There's three of them. So the first one I set equal to name, and then I set it equal to person name because this is the value. This is the name attribute, and this is the value attribute. Since I created a variable named person name that stores the value, this is set equal. And it's always name equals and then plus value, and then that more than likely would be a variable that we. Um, previously created and then when you do the next um, name um, value pair you have to put a and symbol or ampersand symbol I'm not sure what it's called but just the and symbol this is the symbol and you follow the same thing again name equals and then you set equal to the value again person city this is the value oops person city so I set it equal to the value person city. And then in the last one, the third name value pair, use again, use the, the and or ampersand symbol. And then it's country, the name country equals. And then you set equal to the value again, which is right here. So um, how PHP extracts the um, what the user entered into the text box is through the name attribute. So we're going to use, we're going to extract, when we take the file in PHP, which we'll see, and I'll go back to this to show you, we take the name attribute in order to get the value um, in PHP of what the user entered. So we use name, we're concerned with name, city, and country, because that's what the PHP is going to use to get the, the data that the user entered. And then um, again I'll go back to that. And then we use the request.open um, function and we're going to use the method post. That's what you want to use when you're inserting data into a MySQL um, table. Um, you want to use the post method because that's, that's used for insertion a lot of times. You can also use it for anything but especially insertion yeah, the post method is what you want to use. Again, URL, which you set equal to the insert.php file, you'll have to create that. And true means that you want asynchronous requests. You want it to update, insert the data asynchronously. And then what this does is, you realize here, you have to use this, like ampersand or and symbol, um, over and over. Now, now let's say that the the value of the variable contained that. That might throw an error because um, because this is a unique symbol that's needed for this function. So if this contains this, it may let the whole there's function have an error and then the whole program has an error. So to do this we, we use this line that um, prevents that like encoding problem. And then the next line is request.onReadyState equals function. And this, this, sh this just shows that 
ID say equals four and request dot request dot status equals two hundred. This just shows that the server, the browser has sent the request and the server, you know, has is all ready, and that you know it's it's it can send the nest process and send the necessary data. So you just want this line to show that the server has received the request processed it and it's all good so to send back results so that's what this line is about um, and in this we create a variable named return data and we set it equal to request that response text so this is very important um, request that response text is basically the output of the PHP file so if you have a PHP file that sends um, that gives the table of the MySQL just like I did just like I did here um, how I showed the output of the table um, in the MySQL database that would be equal to request that response text it just sends the whole output that you want once the PHP file has processed it and then I set it equal to return underscore data so that holds this this variable return data now holds the output that the PHP file has based on whatever the user entered. So this is just the output of the PHP file, whatever it outputs. And then um and then this lastly updates the page that you're on. So I use the JavaScript document that I get element by ID um function and it looks for any id that has the um id of show table which is what i name mine um and then we update the contents of that based on the asynchronous request so i created underneath this form i created a div with the id show table and then i put it and then I close the div tag and then when the asynchronous request is done and the PHP has the output then it updates that asynchronously with the dot inner HTML function and then it sets equal to again the output of the PHP file so now we we have the output of the the whole asynchronous request and PHP file updated on our page whatever with whatever the ID the HTML element whichever one has the ID show table that gets updated with with each H asynchronous request to the output of uh, whatever the PHP file has done whatever the server outputs based on the request and then lastly I send the this is when you actually send the request So th that can, that's all the HTML and um, JavaScript. I needed only JavaScript and HTML. So now we have the PHP file. So I put this in a insert.php um, page. You have to create a separate PHP page and um, put this in. So I created three variables. Since it's three text boxes to extract the data in PHP, I created name underscore entered, city underscore entered, country underscore entered. And let's go back to that there vars in the JavaScript code. And then remember I said to extract data in PHP, you use the name attribute of this whole there's um, variable. And Use the name attribute for each text box. So name, city, and country are all the name attributes of the name value pairs. So again, that's um, name, city, and country. And then if you go to the PHP, if you go to the PHP um, file you see name city and country and that's how we get the data in PHP 
So now we have the data from the text boxes in our PHP file. So now we just need to create um, a connection with the database. We need a user, password, host, database, and table. And then you just standardly connect to the database. Select the database with the my scroll underscore select underscore database db function. And then um, if they're not, I put that if they're not empty, the, the, the three fields to update the database, to um, insert into the table um, the values entered into the text box. So the table, um, I, I had the columns name, city, and country. So I'll put the values of the variables entered in. And these again were right these three. So whatever these entered in the text box we extracted, put in PHP variables, and this is what we now use to enter in the values into the the table. And then um so that's how you insert data into a MySQL table. That's done. This additional code is just if you want to show the table output, like how I did at the beginning, how I showed the output. But we've done everything now to um, to insert data. My SQL table point is how we show the visually show you the results of when how it's entered. It is based on there so that's all that's required um data asynchronously using peach and ajax and what to do is and from there it's just standard p so um yeah this is how a Um, into a um, MySQL table using Ajax and PHP, and yeah, that's all. Thanks for watching.